is hurting. Former economics advisor to Ronald Reagan, Art Laffer, is back here today from a rainy Nashville, Tennessee. How you doing, Art? Nice to see I'm you. Very well, Bill. Good Thank you very much. You. So you want to paint this in a way that is very significant, not just to the U.S. economy today, but for a very long time in the future. Go ahead and lay out that oh, idea. Oh, I really do. I mean, this is like the Kennedy round tariff negotiation in the 60s that led to a long period of prosperity, 35 percent reduction in tariff rates. It, it's the opposite of what happened under Nixon, where we put the 10 percent import surcharge. We had the job development credit, which caused a horrible 1970s economy. And of course, the classic one of all was the Great Depression, which was brought on by the Smoot-Hawley tariff in 1930-31, which collapsed the U.S. economy and gave us as a present uh, the Great Depression. This is really important. And for two reasons, Bill. One, two people who are very similar can trade with each other by specializing. But here we have two countries that are as different as night and day. And trade between these two countries, the U.S. and China, will have way more import, way more impact on the U.S. economy and the Chinese economy for decades and decades to come. The, it is are, imperative what they get it done. What you're pushing for is cultural change. Totally. Easier said than done. You can get Beijing to buy yes, all kinds of products, soybeans and cars and on and on. But when it comes to intellectual property protection and forced technology transfer yep. and then verifying it, I, that, that is but a big hill to climb. It is a big uh, hill to climb. But can do it remember be done? the Chinese? Yeah. I mean, the, the Chinese are not uh, oblivious of this either. They understand the same issues the Americans do, and they know what's right and they know what's wrong. And it's just getting them together to see it and to do it correctly without acting as if you were a selfish, self-interested nationalist. Uh, we need to do it on a global scale so everyone's protected and we have good free trade without someone trying to take advantage of the other person. Yeah, no, someone said, if you don't do it now, you'll never get it done. This is your only well, bite at the apple. Well, are, you, are you in that at, school? At, at 78 years old, of course I am. <laughs> can what they? can I tell you? I yeah. mean, when you had, when, when I was 20, no, I think we could probably have another good shot at it 40 years from now. But uh, right now, I think we have a great chance. And of course, as you know, my dear friend Larry Kudlow, I trust him 100 percent. I think he's just phenomenal as an advisor and as a negotiator and all of this. And Mnuchin is fantastic as well. So, so turn, mean, turn the argument around then, Art. What's in it for Beijing? If you say that the Chinese oh. are well aware of this, what yes. would be their incentive to go ahead and change the culture? that I just laid out for you. Oh, because the culture means that they'll benefit from trade, too. See, what they haven't understood is they're sort of much more mercantilist than we are. They think that trade is for us getting an advantage over America, and we win, they lose. It's not. The two trading partners both win. It's a win-win. It's a gains from trade, comparative advantage, all of that. And they have to be brought to this realization that this is not a nationalistic issue. Xi has been behaved as quite a nationalist on this stuff. But I do think he understands that now, with the threats of tariffs, he realizes his country is very vulnerable to trade with the United States. And frankly, I think uh, uh, he's going to come through and be really a great leader of China and agree to what's good for them and for us. Well, I hope you're right about that. I think we've I been playing. So too. I, I think we've been playing a short game, Art. I, I think they've been playing a I long think so. game. I, I don't know if that's really changed just much. Uh, well, I don't think there that. is a long game. I think it's all a short game, which goes into a long game. And my guess is, Bill, that if we got a really great deal with China within a year, the Dow would be 4,000 points higher. I mean, it's that big a deal. Dow 30,000. <laughs> yeah, you got Why it. Not? Last comment here. If you were to fill in the following sentence, the state of our economy today is what? Great. Great. I mean, this job, this president has created jobs and output that no one thought could happen, and he's done it, and he's going to continue doing it, I hope. I mean, so far, this economy has performed way above anyone's expectations. And it's all because of the Trump tax bill, the deregulation, the monetary reform that's occurred. The only thing we need to do now, Bill, is really get control of government spending, which we have not done. And that needs to that's be done nice. 22, in the next term. $22 trillion, $1.2 trillion deficit uh, every year. It's way too much. They could yes, have gone further on the tax bill, though. They could have gone they further have, for, the individual, <laughs> for the individual arts. For the individual, they could have done you're that. You right. know that. You're, uh, you're right, and that's what Trump told me about four weeks ago. He said, we should have gone further. But, he told you, you know, that? We went very far. We did a, yes, he did. Uh, because I was comparing his bill to the 86 Tax Act, where we dropped the highest rate down to 28 percent, if you'll remember. And when he heard that, he said, yeah, I wanted my guys to get it lower than 37. And, well, you know, they, that's, they, they where, should that's have. where his mind the, is. The reality on April 15th for a lot of Americans is not going to be good. Just a prediction. Thank you, Art. I hope you come well, back. Thank you, Bill. Thanks and, uh, very much. Enjoy the rain in Nashville. Art Laffer, thank you. <laughs> my Heather. pleasure.